technology company for 20 years. I sold it and we bought the trailer of our dreams, an Airstream trailer. We love to go camping and a lot of the times the best campsites don't have power and I wanted to be able to camp wherever we wanted, whenever we wanted, for as long as we wanted. And I sat there and I thought, you know what, my car that I already tow my trailer with is three quarters of a generator already. It's got all the key things. It's got a gas tank, it's got a great engine, it's got a great alternator. All I need is the last piece and I just figured out how to do that. So I invented a cool way that we could create power directly from our vehicle that we're traveling in. So I created this system, we used it for a while and it was great. Then I was sitting on my front porch as the storms were rolling in and we were hearing about power outages and hurricanes and all kinds of devastation and I thought if the power went out in my house what would I do? And at first I went and I bought a big kerosene heater. I bought this uh, kerosene thing and I had a bunch of kerosene cans and then I sat and I thought hmm I wonder I wonder if I could take this thing that I invented for camping and actually just hook it up to my furnace and if it would run my furnace. So I got it out, I ran an extension cord in, I hooked it up, and it worked. It was the coolest thing. So then I realized, I've actually got a solution here. I don't need to store a bunch of gas cans and kerosene cans, keep them all fresh to keep the house warm. I can basically just hook up my car to my furnace and I can keep the house warm. A tree had gone onto the street and taken out a power line and we uh, were out of power. Jonathan came, came by and uh, hooked it up onto my car and we started plugging some things in such as my, my boiler and my uh, floor heating and uh, we have a sump, a sump pump now. We dug down our basement and it turns out it takes on a lot more water than it used to. We used to take on a little bit of water but now it's taking on more. I didn't want to leave my, my partner and the kids at home with, uh, with an over, or a flooding basement. So what it is, you've got uh, booster cables. These are heat proof, solid copper strand booster cables. Hook that in, it's rainproof, weatherproof, it's zero maintenance, no oil changes, no gas tanks, and this will run with your car for about five, up to five or six days if you need it. So, fast forward to today, I've now invented this product that really in one small, sleek, simple unit, the 16 pounds, you can store, you no maintenance, nothing, you can both go camping with it anywhere you want for as long as you want or you can use it to power the furnace in your house. <laughs> How cool is that? Isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah you're running cool. you're running off your van. Yeah. You're running your furnace off your van. Saving the house. Or your fridges in the summertime or at the cottage or sump pumps to keep your house dry or all these kinds of different things. That's a little bit about my background. Um, um, so we're going to talk about ways to power your Airstream, and I'm going to share what we know about that. And I've got some really cool things, which is the di I'll show you the different ways to to power your Airstream. Number one is electric. Number one is plugging into the grid. Good old standby. Take the big, thick gray cable, plug it into your connector, and that's it. It's electric. Uh, plug into a portable gas generator. Another good standby that everyone goes and they buy a 60 or 100 pound generator and they plug in. It's electric! 
tool. People put it on their house, they put it on their car, they put it on the trailer. When we bought our trailer, the guy that had it before put three panels on it. We installed a couple more, so then we had five big panels on there and we learned the good and bad of that. Uh, it's electric! Uh, the hitch connector, um, the little seven-way plug. A lot of people on Airstream Addicts ask me or on the internet ask us about you know, can I plug that in? And I learned this the hard way. When we were first early trailer owners, we had drawn our trailer batteries down quite far. It was actually a pop-up trailer at the time. And then I thought, great, we got a good eight or 10 hours of driving ahead of us the next day. Plugged it in with a smile on, face, on my face thinking, hey, I'm gonna be all filled up and, filled up and ready to go. When I got to destination, there was like 40% battery only in my trailer. And we learned the hard way that that, that little connector, connector does not give you much power. And I'll tell you exactly how much in a minute. It's electric! The last number five is plug your, uh, directly to your vehicle through high power connectors. We're going to show you that today as well. So, um, the easiest way I call this uh, RV trailer power for dummies. Um, basically, the easiest way to think about power on your trailer, you've got watts and amps and volts, and is it 12.5, is it 13, is it 14, what is it, what's the charging rate? Really easy. How many of you have two batteries on your Airstream trailer in the front? Pretty much everyone, that's most how they stock. Okay, good. <laughs> um, someone just popped in their head there. So, two batteries in your trailer, and think of that like $200, it's 200 amps. Think of it like a bank account. And then the things that you use in your trailer, like the pumps, the lights, things like that, draw money out of your bank account, and things like solar or plugging into the grid put money back into your bank account. So, um, uh, <laughs> Canadian or US, good question. Um, so think of it like a bank account, you've got 200 amps capacity total. Now people argue on air forums and the attics and all these different places on whether you should be drawn down to 50% or 30% or 70%. There's lots of arguments about that. The whole point about drawing it below 50% is that you'll, uh, you'll, you'll wear your batteries out sooner. But there's actually a lot of other factors that play into that if you're using a trailer a lot in hot weather. There's lots of other types of factors that also factor in it. The main thing to remember is you've the got 200 amps, and you should try to not get it too far below half of that, maybe 40%. Don't you know? Don't go crazy if you do, but uh, that's generally what you're working with. Um, using your furnace, your lights, uh, pumps, things like that is a withdrawal. Putting it in, solar, grid power, vehicle power are deposits. So here is the withdrawals. I'm going to give you actual some numbers, and we're recording this. Uh, as, as well, we're going to post it on the internet and on Airstream Addicts in a couple places um, because some people can't attend and they want to know how much does it use. So, the lights in your trailer use between 3 and 10 amps per hour. And I'm going to show you a live video that I shot to show you exactly all this as well. So, 3 to 10 amps per hour. Your furnace, when it's running, uses between 6 to 8 amps per hour. So, if you have 200 in the bank, Bank, it's cold outside, you've just pulled out around six, it cycles on and off, but rough numbers, six amps to eight amps every hour that that's running. So you can see how it can get down pretty cold when we use it in the colder weather. We'll find that uh, run the furnace all night, the next morning we're down to maybe 70 or 50 percent, and you can see how easy that is to do. Water pumps, when you take a shower, five or six amps per hour. Uh, coffee, coffee maker, 80 to 90 amps, amps per hour, and I list these in, in per hour, it's normally not referenced that way, but it's an easy way for you to think if I run the fans, well you'll see in a second, 24 hours, what happens then. Um, toaster, 40 amps. Uh, TV is 10 to 15 amps. Uh, the Airstream fridge, not on gas, so if you have an inverter and it's running from there, just to give you an idea, is 36 amps per hour. Uh, fantastic fans, they are on high, they're 3 amps each. So you can do that calculation if you've got 6 amps between the two of them, if you've got two of them, you run that 10 hours, 20 hours, you can see you can chew up your power pretty quick. Uh, so I'm going to show you a quick video here to actually see, you can see live some of these numbers. So I want to show you how much different things in your RV use for power. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to, first of all, 
shut off a lot of the things and whatever is running. Let me shut off a lot of the lights here. And let's see. <coughs> so if you come down here and have a look, we are now using about three lights on in the trailer. We are currently using two amps. It's a meter on the right So um, currently this is a this is a simple amp meter that shows us how much power your trailer uses. So currently we were using we've got three lights on in the trailer and we're using two amps. Now I'm gonna show you and switch on the fan. This is the ceiling fan. That one ceiling fan has gone to five. And this is the fine here. I'm going to switch on the second ceiling fan. And it's gone to the next number, eight. So switch on a few more lights. I'm going to just turn on the light of the stove. And a couple of simple things that we use every day. And you can see that we're currently using around 10 amps. Exactly. So um, the solar panels on our roof, we've got five solar panels, 520 watts. And the very, very perfect, most best, perfect day, they bring in about 25 to 30 amps on an hourly basis at the very perfect middle. Most of the, you know, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and so forth they're only going to be about 10 amps. So we have uh, lots of lights in the trailer on, the way we like to use it, and we are now using, and we've got two fans running, and we're using about 17 amps. If you're running the furnace in the winter, I use about five or six amps on a continuous basis. So as you can see, summertime and winter time, you're actually using a fair amount of amps if you're running lights, if you're running fans, doing things like that. Next, I want to show you how much power different AC appliances take, just so you have it in terms of watts. So, uh, that's how you use power. That's how you take money out of the bank on your trailer, out of those batteries. Now, how do you put it back in? The grid. The built-in Airstream charger charges at between 20 to 30 amps. That's uh, pretty much standard. It's a 55 amp converter. Um, but the amount that actually gets absorbed into the batteries, and I've put meters on it, we'll see in a minute on the videos, is between 20 to 30 amps. Portable gas generator, exactly the same. It's just supplying power just like the grid, so it doesn't know your stream charge, charge doesn't know which is which. Car generator, exactly the same. It's just like power from the grid, it doesn't know. Um, solar, 3 to 30 amps. Um, how many of you have two panels that come from the factory on your Airstream? Anybody? Okay, so those are a little bit less. You're probably you know, thinking the range of 10 to 12 maybe uh, if in terms of uh, that's 160 amps, rough numbers. Um, so that's what it takes. So if you're running your lights in the night, you're running your fans, you can see how, how much you need to recharge. Um, the other one thing about solar is it changes during the day. So in the morning we got three and that gets to seven, then it gets 10 and 20 and then it peaks and then it goes down quickly in the afternoon and then you have cloudy spells in there as well. So it's not 30 amps continuously. Um, and vehicle direct charger, which I'm going to show you in a minute, up to 90 amps. So you can put that in safely and easily from your vehicle without damaging your car, your vehicle, your batteries, anything. I'm going to show you that in a minute. So, uh, charging with the Airstream factory charger, I'm going to give you a quick video I shot at Lumapalooza that will show you that. Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful day at Lumapalooza, the rally at the Airstream factory. And I'm just going to show you a Mm -hmm. Quick video to show when you're powering your trailer using your car. So that's car generator right there. And I'm going to take you inside to show you specifically um, how when we plug in, when we plug it in here, when we plug in the uh, power up, um, the uh, using a factory charger. So this little meter down here will show us in a second once the circuit kicks over. Um, it'll show us how many amps we are charging 
um, going into our batteries using battery and stock chargers. So just click. See the standard charger, which is about 55 amps, as you see in there, um, is outputting currently into our batteries. We have four different types of batteries, uh, about 400 amp capacity. Um, it's outputting about 27 amps roughly. And you can see, just for fun, uh, here, uh, this is how many watts are actually being consumed or being provided by the, if you're running a gas generator or plugged into the grid or a campground or anything else, these are how many watts are actually being consumed in, uh, if you're running a gas generator as an example, it would be using 475 watts and that translates to approximately 25 amps. Thanks very much for watching, have a great day. So, uh, that means that when you fire up your 5,000 or 7,000 watt uh, mega generator that you have, um, you're actually only using about 400 to 500 watts of that whole running engine to put 27 or 28 uh, amps back into the battery. So, our friend, the solar controller. How many people have a solar controller that shows them how many amps are coming in from solar? Anybody? Okay, they're starting to build it into more of the new trailers. It's, it's our friend because, because I actually, actually love, love to watch it because it feels, it feels like it's free energy. energy. Um, so um, I love it. I sit there and I look at it and I say, look at that. I got 25 free ants coming in from the sun, but it's really not free because I paid like five grand for it. So, um, <laughs> uh, but it is kind of fun once you get it installed. You at least get a sense of, it's great to have solar just to add a little bit. But we went on a camping trip last year with my wife and our daughter um, for two weeks. You know, you go to a campsite and they say, okay, you're in A273, you go there, boom, it's all covered in shade, you're going to get no solar, and by the way, you arrived late at night, and there's no sun, so solar didn't help you very much there. So sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't, but it's great to have anyway. So that's our friend, the solar controller. Um, some threads on Airform, Uncle Bob, does some, how many you know, recognize from Airform, Uncle Bob, anybody? Okay, so he's got some good postings on there that summarize things well, that had some good points on them. Um, uh, so I posed a question on Airstream Addicts actually. How many days, how many hours a day, by the way, how many people here have a gas generator? Lots. For a good number, yeah. So how many hours a day do you typically run a gas generator? Is it 24 hours, 10, 20? And I posted this on Airstream Addicts and I did a poll and this is what came back. So, so most of the people said that they run it between one to three hours. So that's kind of parallel with us. We pull into a campsite, we make dinner, we want to watch TV, we just fire it up, it charges things, we can make dinner, and uh, then we go to bed with a filled up battery. So that's how people tend to run generators. Now, in the case of this crazy heat that we've had here, um, yeah, like that's a whole different kettle of fish. You gotta, I don't think I would even run a generator. I would probably just go and find a campground and plug in to the grid. It's really not fun just hearing. For me, it's not fun to like sit there and listen to the gas generator smell and, and grind away for 24 hours, which is kind of what you need in this kind of heat. So that's that. Um, the goal is one thing, to refill your power as quick, quiet, easy, and safe as possible. And I'm going to share with you today how I found out to do that and how you can do that. So how do you use your tow vehicle as a generator? Um, some people have kind of done this, but I wanted to actually commercialize this and bring it to be something that people could use super easy. So um, direct DC, DC cables. So how many people here have done the uh, the um, jumper cable trip, trick? Like to hook up your trailer to your car batteries with jumper cables to recharge your batteries? Anybody? Okay, some people. So that's great. It's an old trick that you can basically connect up your jumper cables between your trailer and your car battery, start your car, and it will charge. Now, the things that that depends on is you have to have high quality jumper cables. They have to have jumper cables. They have to be pure copper. They have to be a very thick gauge, minimum four or two uh, gauge. They got to be ter fairly short. The cheap uh, cables that you buy um, for boosting, they're very light and they're great because they do one thing. They transfer, you know, 200 amps or 500 amps or whatever they say, but they do it for 30 seconds. It's very different when you need to transfer for a longer period of time. So. Um, the car generator boost, which you'll see is a product that we invented that actually does it faster than booster cables, and I'll show you why. 
um, in a second here. So the ways you can use your tow vehicle as a generator is the car is is that uh, an inverter. Has anyone hooked up an inverter to your car and then used that as power? Anybody? A couple people. It's like this secret. I don't know why. Like a lot of people just don't know how to do it. I personally watch all the power outages across the country. and I see people sitting there shivering in their house with their food rotting in their fridge and you can buy an inverter like anywhere you can buy it from Home Depot you can buy it from Best Buy all these places and that's actually the core of what you need to turn your car into a generator your car has a great gas tank an engine an alternator and the last piece you need is an inverter so um, if you're gonna do this yourself get a pure sine wave inverter uh, that's our recommendation. It's better than there's two kinds of inverters, modified sign and pure sign. And afterwards, by the way, I'll give you my card. Um, Mike, if I could ask or someone um, to grab them from my booth afterwards, or if you could just bring them before I end up, that'd be great. Um, so, um, yeah, get a pure sine wave inverter because uh, it, the output is clean. It won't damage your TV, it won't damage your motors, it won't damage any kind of equipment. So it'll run your CPAP machines, your medical machines, all those kinds of things, no problem. It's powered just exactly like the grid. So buy pure sine wave inverter. If you're going to do this, use pure copper cables. Use the best gauge you can, uh, the thickest gauge you can, generally speaking, at minimum two to four, I'd say. Um, and make sure the most important thing is make sure that your voltage in your vehicle stays above 13.3. So what happens is your, your car engine is producing power from the alternator, um, your battery is sitting here at the table and then we're pulling power off for doing things like this. If you draw more power out of this and your voltage goes below 13.3, you're borrowing from your battery. You can do it for five minutes, no harm at all. But if you do it for half an hour or an hour, it will uh, drain your battery. Um, so make sure that your voltage stays above 13.3. That way you know your, your vehicle alternator is providing the power. Um, one of the quick things that people ask, will it damage my vehicle? Will it damage my alternator? One of the number one questions people ask, will this damage my alternator? So not even using any kind of like just using pure logic it's very simple we actually ran a, we shot a video um where we went we took a dodge minivan and we didn't start the engine but we turned on everything that that vehicle had all the accessories the headlights the wipers the defroster the, everything not the windows but uh, everything else and we actually clocked it with a dc clamp amp meter and we could see just in that simple case of a very plain Jane uh, Dodge minivan, it was pulling 70 to 80 amps. So using just pure logic, if you start your car on a cold winter day or a cold day, start it up, put the defroster on high, switch it on, put the fan on, put the heated seats and everything else you've got on, um, you're pulling that much out. So what our philosophy or what we say is you're not going anywhere, turn all that off and we'll pull it out as power that you can use for your trailer, to run your furnace at home, to run your sump pump, to run your fridges, and it's completely safe. You're doing nothing unusual that the car wouldn't normally do. So that's the whole thinking and the logic behind it is logic pulling anything out of it that the car can't sustain, we're not damaging the alternator, we're not doing any of those kinds of things. It's a very simple way. It's just like running the accessories in your car. So why use your tow vehicle? Number one, it's lightweight and convenient. Number two, it's environmentally superior. How many people have a gas generator with an advanced catalytic converter and emissions control system on it? Nobody. <laughs> it doesn't exist. If you can't put $7,000 or $10,000 worth of engine management controls and catalytic converters and all these different things on a generator that's $700 or $1,000, it just make no, it makes no sense. But your car, has that all built into it and it does it really well and it's government regulated. It has to be checked on a regular basis. So the emissions of your car actually is very regulated and so it's the cleanness. Some of the cars out there actually they've done studies um, actually uh, can produce air that's even cleaner in, in dirty cities, even cleaner than what came into it. So 
Um, anyway, so it's environmentally superior. Uh, one hour, the stat is one hour of running a generator, like a leaf blower kind of thing, is equivalent to 24 hours of running your vehicle. So there's some variance in there, but you get the idea it's a lot cleaner to run your vehicle. Longer run time. So instead of filling the gas tank in the middle of the night or every three or four hours, your vehicle published by, uh, there's a website, energy.gov, which publishes how much every vehicle uses or typical vehicle uses at idle. And your vehicle at idle uses in around the range of what a gas generator does. So there's an example there. We'll show you in a second here. It's quite comparable. It's in the range of what it is. So it's not a lot more. It's quite efficient. We're going to show that in a minute. Uh, so it's less gas. It's hassle-free and zero maintenance. There's no worries about starting, not starting. It's hassle-free. It's there. Your car started yesterday and it works on gas, diesel, hybrid, pure electric, any of those different kinds of vehicles. It works well in all those. Um, so uh, Ji Hong, how many of you know the know Ji Hong Kang? Anybody? Apparatus, <laughs> yeah. She's, she's so, so, so cool. cool. She's like this intrepid, amazing she's traveler. This, this like camping, camping in the winter, winter like living in a ski resort, resort parking lot. She's in Norway now. She's now flying back to back to, back to, back to Vancouver where she lives. It's amazing. So, so I actually sent her a car, gen a car generator and she used it for some of her camping experiences. So that's really what this is. You can use this very simply. And she pulls with like a, an SUV. So she didn't have room for gas cans and storing things and all this. So. Um, idling. One of the other big things people like talk about is idling. So anti-idling bylaws generally don't apply. Um, there's lots of variances this and that. I will tell you, um, if you're using your vehicle for an emergency situation, like your house is without power and you're powering your house, you will not get a ticket for idling. We have not have of the hundreds of these we've sold and shipped across the country, not one customer has ever got an anti-idling ticket. It just doesn't exist. Now, if you're using it in downtown Chicago on a busy street, okay, it might be different, but generally speaking, there's anti-idling doesn't apply. And the other big thing, you're not actually idling. It's called power. You're taking power. It's actually doing, it's performing a function. And also vehicles that are involved in emergency situations are exempt as well. So there's lots of things about anti-idling. Um, so here. How long can a vehicle idle from a full tank? So here's an example of stats right from their websites. Uh, 2010 Honda Civic, 13-gallon tank can idle for 88 hours. 2010 Ford F-150 can idle for close to 92 hours. So not that you necessarily want to, but if you need to, um, it's there. The point of that is to know two things. One. If you idle for two or three hours, run your engine, hook this up while you're making dinner, while you're watching TV, you're not even going to see your gas gauge move. It's not even going to impact it. It'll be completely meaningless. Number two, um, if you use this for an emergency situation and you're stuck in your house and you need power and you want to keep everything warm, um, you've got the duration if you need to. Or you can just run it during the day, shut it off at night, run your fridges, shut them off, all kinds of different things. Um, how much does it use per hour? A two liter engine uses 0.16 gallons per hour. Four liter engine uses 0.39 gallons an hour. A Honda generator uses 0.19 gallons per hour. And a 3000 watt generator uses 0.47 gallons per hour. So you can see it's kind of in the range. It's not, out, you know, it's not outlandishly outside of it. Um, it's very similar. So, Okay, okay, so how, how can you, you, what's the fastest, fastest safest, safest, easiest way to charge your trailer batteries? I'm going to show you a little video. This is Ji Hong, if you haven't met her yet, um, from Illumapalooza Aluma about a month ago. It's pretty fun here. So we are here at Illumapalooza, my friend Ji Hong, um, and she's going to try out the new car generator boost. And this is really simple. Here's how you use it. You just go ahead. This is the car generator boost right here. And basically all you do is you plug that part into the front. You can, the plug is already okay. here. Okay. Yeah, is it yep. already marked uh, plus and uh, plus two two? It's you foolproof, you can't reverse it. So basically, oh, okay. and how heavy is it, Ji Hung? It's very light. It's very light, maybe about three pounds, five pounds. Yes. And then this here, there's a plug that connects to your trailer batteries. And you plug it in. Yep, push it tight. Yep. Yeah. 
it makes a good connection and that's it. That's a rubber, this thing here is a little rubber <laughs> cap that keeps the rain out of it and the dust when you're traveling. Mm -hmm. So now let's look at this. So here, we are now charging at 70, 60 amps. So for comparison, mm -hmm. if you have the solar uh, solar power on your roof, it's uh, you're getting maybe 15 or 20 amps and um, at the best of times, uh, with your, uh, when you plug it into the um, the regular power cord for the grid, you're charging at about 20 or 30 amps. And now here in this case, we are powering up at 65 amps. So all you do with car generator is you basically wait until um, this goes down. So you can see it'll charge fast at the beginning and it'll gradually go down to 20 or 10. And when it gets down to 20 or 10, then you know you're done. And that's that, it. That will be how many percent have been charged? Well, when it gets down to like 10, 10 amps that it's pushing in, that means the battery is almost completely full, so okay. it can't take any more. Okay. And that's it. And when you're done, you just take it out. Okay. And just I'll show you, this here just comes off. Yeah. And this little plug here, this plug here, basically, if you just video me doing it for a yeah. second. So this here is the plug and it's got a little rubber cap in it. You can store it safely inside mm -hmm. your engine department. Your mm -hmm. dealer or whoever installs it will help you do that the right way and that's it. Yeah. Wow. That's a there really simple. Car generator boost. Yeah. Great. From Alumapalooza 10. Over and out. Bye. Okay. So I'm taking you on a virtual tour of a lot of places instead of dragging you around so you can just see all these things sitting in your seats. Um, so, so useful tools, tools and resources, cardgenerator.com on videos, tons of great videos that share all the information and the knowledge about what we do. Uh, if you are wanting to do a bigger one, we, has, we have a 2000 watt uh, model as well, or you can, if you're making this yourself, you want to use a 2000 watt inverter, um, go to Nation Starter Alternator. They're excellent and they're experts at putting a dual alternator in the vehicle you already have that really rock the juice, that really push out the power that you need at idle, in heat, uh, like in hot, whatever kind of climate. So I would definitely go to them. Uh, amp meter, if you're a geek, get one, like I am sort of, get one of these, uh, it's called a clamp meter, it basically goes around a wire, uh, the DC version, you can tell exactly how many amps are going in and out. We actually used this at Alumapalooza uh, a year or two ago to know someone didn't know their trailer batteries were dead. So I actually went over and I took this clamp meter and I put it on there and we were able to see how much was the charger putting in, how much were they taking out, and in, in like five minutes we could determine easily that their batteries were dead without even taking them out without a big tester and everything else. It's a great, and you can get it, if you email me I'll tell you, what, you get one for 45 bucks on Amazon. Um, there's some really good versions of it. So, a watt meter, one of these guys. This is great, how many have one of these things? It's called a kilowatt meter. You can plug it into anything and see exactly how many watts is your fridge using, is your waffle iron using, is your hair dryer using. There was a lot of discussion uh, about hair dryers recently and, and uh, boondocking with hair dryers. This can tell you exactly how much hair dryer uh, your, uh, your hair dryer uses on every setting. Right. <laughs> um, so that's that. Uh, how many of you know Andy Thompson from Pan Am? I just, I just wanted to say a special thanks to them because they've been supporters of this since way then in the early days of it. Um, so he was at Illuminapalooza as well, and we just I wanted to say thank you to him. So, because it's raining outside, so, um, whoever wants to brave the rain, I'll take you. Be glad to take you out afterwards. But I shot a video just today, this morning, a live video about two or three minutes that'll actually give you a tour of what I'm going to tour you through there. So you're welcome to come back afterwards um, if you want or I'll just run this video. This will give you a real, a real uh, example. So here you go. Yep. Cool. Hi, it's Jonathan with Car Generator and I'm at the International Airstream Rally. It's a rainy day here and it's a perfect day to see how you get power from your car instead of solar. We've got five solar panels on the roof, almost a half a kilowatt, but it gives us about four amps only today, which is not very much. So instead, we can use our car for power. It's two wings. Either we can use our car generator, which is this guy here. It's just 11 pounds or 16 pounds for the larger model. And this is producing up to 1500 watts. That we simply plug in through an extension cord, goes directly into our Airstream, just like that. 
Uh, some of your Airstreams have a generator port on the front. It's just like the regular one, or you can use your regular um, uh, connector on the side and just run a 15 amp piece into it. Today, I'm doing a seminar at 3 o'clock. Come on out, check it out. Second thing I'm going to show you, which is really cool, is called the Car Generator Boost. And this is the fastest. This here, the brand new product. This is the safest, fastest way to charge your Airstream batteries when they're getting low. All you do when you need to charge them is exactly this. Have a look. You take this, which is the car generator boost, and you plug it in like that, and you simply plug it into your Airstream like that. And all of a sudden, we have 55 amps flowing into the Airstream. And this unit is completely weatherproof, so you can let it run in the rain or the shine, and it'll basically just go down as the battery fills up. And that is the car generator boost. So, car generator, car generator boost. Come on out, check them out today, and have a great day. So now I think you just press It's Jonathan with Car Generator, and we are at the National Rally, and it's a rainy day. It's raining like crazy. Days like this are exactly when you need a car generator, not just an inverter. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to hook this up and have a look here. So basically, you attach uh, this to your Airstream, either using a cable plug in the front, the regular plug, or the regular plug from the side, you can use. Plug into a plug just like this. Plug into here and then into your car generator. Mm. So right now, this is just a regular plug like this. And just simply plug this in. This unit here, you can come and zoom on a little bit. This unit is 100% weatherproof, so it can rain, it can snow, it can ice, and this will produce power for you. 1,000 to 2,000 watts, depending on what you need. And that's it. So car generator is exactly the power you need for a rainy day just like this, when you need power to Now, we've got five panels on the roof, five solar panels. Guess how much power we're getting from those? You have a look and see. Let's have a look. Four. We're getting four amps. That's all we're getting from solar. So instead, we're using our car generator to create power, and, um, Okay. And there you go. Jonathan's the car generator. Car generator will keep you running even in the rain. Here. The puppies were pre models in there. They're so cute. Um, so that's, that's, and you know what we found is rainy days are actually when you need this the most. Like that's usually we found the sunny days are out doing things. But if you're stuck on a campsite and it's raining, and that's actually when you need power at night. So the whole point of this is to be able to get power when it's raining. Um, so I've got one little short video to show you, and then we're going to wrap up. Um, so we offer our customers that you can upgrade. So if you buy, if you're not sure, do I need a thousand or fifteen hundred or two thousand watt unit? We offer a trade-in program within two years if you buy one and you realize I wish I had a little bit more. Just get started with whichever one you want, and then if you need to upgrade, we'll take the other one back, and just for the difference in price to upgrade you, we'll give you a brand new free one. So people ask, what do you do with the ones that come back? And I'm going to show you a cool thing of what we do with, uh, not very many come back, but the ones that do, I'll show you one of the uh, things that we do here, which is pretty cool. My name is Daniel Sear. I'm the uh, coordinator for the Rescue AV program through Global Medic. We're out here today at the Humber Valley RC uh, Flyer Club to uh, train our team 
on uh, being prepared to deploy when disaster strikes. Also testing new gear to help us uh, stay active and flying uh, in uh, disaster zones. In particular, our power source for charging our uh, equipment. We're, we're utilizing uh, uh, portable generators. When we don't have access to that, we look at using 12 volt system from vehicles to be able to charge our batteries up. Well, we contacted uh, Jonathan at uh, Car Generator to see if we could find a better option than what we had with traditional inverters. So we're out here testing today and looking for uh, uh, more consistent power results and uh, hopefully faster charging so that we can keep our, uh, our uh, drones in the air and doing what we're supposed to be doing and that's uh, mapping and situational awareness. So that's kind of a cool thing that we got into that uh, we can use these for um, disaster aid. So um, just to wrap up, uh, our Airstream Flying Cloud is out in the, in the back. I think it's that direction, out the back side of the building. Uh, I'd be happy to show this to you, anyone. Um, Michael over there uh, has got cards and brochures. You've got business cards too, right? Yeah, so grab a business card for sure. Now, uh, we've, we've got, got our international rally, rally sales, so it's a $175 bonus pack you get, which is, just so you know, um, it's uh, $100 off, it's um, three-year extended warranty, a power meter, and free shipping all included, and there's $100 off. So um, basically just go to our website, and you can, if you want to order any of our units, um, it's, uh, we'll basically just order it as is, and we'll credit, instant credit back $100 on any of our uh, car generator units. Um, if you're asking how much they are, also the thousand watt unit is six seventy, sorry, six ninety five. The, the fifteen hundred watt unit is nine ninety five, and the um, two thousand watt unit is thirteen ninety five. Um, car generator boost. This is this crazy cool new product. We just released this, and we are going into production on this uh, first week in August. So this is going to be $395. It is on right now at a pre-order pricing of $100 off. So if you place your order for this, for $295, it'll ship in within the first week or two of August. Um, that's $295. And that includes all the cables. There's extra cables that go attached to your engine, which are high heat proof, and then one that goes to your airstream. Um, that's the car generator boost. And cargenerator.com, that is uh, the website. So. Uh, now, now I'm going to open it up to q and I will happily answer any question about anything about this, so uh, start here. So you talked about heaters, but what about air conditioning? Okay. Oh yes, this is a very hot topic, especially in this very hot climate. Um, air conditioners. People are asking, can you run an air conditioner on this? And the answer is yes, you can. Um, on the 2000 watt unit, but there's a couple things. This is not primarily, was not primarily intended for air conditioning because air conditioning is something you really need to run. Like when I first arrived at the rally here, we basically, our air conditioners run 24 seven, like uh, no, completely continuously it's run. So the purpose of this product, this is perfect if you want to run your AC, if you're going to stop for lunch and you want to just cool your coach down so you can have a nice lunch and enjoy yourself or have a nap. Perfect for that. Do that, fire it up, run it for a couple hours. Um, but it's not meant to run your car for four days straight because your neighbors are going to be very upset with you. Um, you're better off to just go to, go to a campsite, plug into power, and that's actually the smarter way. So that's one thing. You do need, if you want to run air conditioning, uh, our 2000 watt unit will do it if you have easy start, but you do need a dual alternator vehicle. Now, a lot of people, some people do have a dual alternator vehicle. I don't, but um, a lot of people do. If you want to do that, you can do that. So that's our 2,000 watt unit, which requires that. So that's 
a hot topic of air conditioning. Oh, oh one, one thing I'll add about that is the RV industry is very interesting. interesting. Nobody, nobody pays for air conditioning. No, nobody, nobody pays for electricity. For electricity. Almost nobody. nobody. You, you pay for it when you go to do a campsite, campsite booking. So, so because of that, the RV industries have used the cheapest air conditioners, generally speaking, quality, but not energy efficient. So to give you an idea, that you know, the like I can go and get an LG window air conditioner, five or eight thousand unit um, from Lowe's, and it runs it no problem. But the one that's on the top of your coach is not energy efficient, and it's because no one cares about the cost of hydro or electricity. So that's just a little tidbit from the industry. However, they're starting to now gradually come up with more efficient ones. Um, and there is a Coleman Mach 10, which is only nine amps, which this actually could run. So, okay, okay questions. questions. Uh, go ahead, uh, Purple. So you have two different products. One product charges the, the trailer batteries, and then your trailer runs off those batteries, and the other unit, you run your power directly from the unit. That's yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so, so we'll clarify. Products. There's two, two, two main products, products we have. One, One is the car generator, generator boost. boost. This, this little, little guy here. here. If, if you have, have a big inverter in your trailer already, if you've got a 1500 or a big juicy inverter in there, this, this could probably do most of what you need because you just need to charge your trailer batteries super quick and easy. Um, the, the other thing, thing about the regular car generator, car generator like that is um, it's very simple. You don't have to install anything. There's no connectors to install. Like the car generator boost does need to be installed. You need to like hook it up to the wiring. This one here, you can just get it. You can pick it up today and you can basically um, just hook it up to your booster cable, put it into your 30 amp connector, and that's it. So that's the difference between those two. And it will also run your, you can run TV, run your medical equipment, run everything. It just plugs in, and it gives you 7 to 10, 7 to 10 amps. Um, that one does our 1500 watt model. With the white label, this one here gives you around 14 amps, 13, 14 amps. And then our 20, our 2000 watt model gives you about 18, 19 amps. So, questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, is there a limit to the length of the cable? Can I leave my tow vehicle hooked up and have the cable run back? Yes. yes. Um, so, is there a limit to the length of the cable? And this is designed to have a. Um, oh, to, yeah, to hook it up. Yes, actually, for the boost product, right? Yeah, yeah, someone, someone asked ask about, about that, and we will actually release a extender kit for that um, that you can basically, it'll just give you a wire that you can, like you saw how Ji Hong just connected it on, uh, we'll ex release an extender cable that you can just clip in when you need a longer situation, and you can buy that after the fact as well. So yes, because if you're boondock, you don't want to disconnect, absolutely. So yeah, you will be able to do that. Questions? Same question I asked earlier. USD or CEM? Oh, uh, it's, it's in US dollars. <laughs> Correct. Um, um, who, who else? Are cars designed to run on idle for that amount of time without a car? That's, That's a really great question. question. And, and that, that was, was one of the key questions. questions. And actually, when, when I went on, I'm, it's, it's interesting. I went, when, when we came up with this idea and we released it, um, we posted it on a couple places, and that was one of the principal questions that people ask. Will this damage my car by idling it? And actually, when I went on Dragon's Den, that was one of the first things that the dragons asked me. One of the dragons asked me. It was interesting, very polarized. There was two ways of thinking on it. And, and one was, will this damage my vehicle? And the other one was the guy that actually invested and put 100 grand on show to do this. He actually came down, picked up the generator and said, he actually went back to the other dragon and he said, look, if I've got no power, my house is freezing, I'm cold or my fridge is rotting, I don't care, I'll turn on my car and I'll get power. So that's just, just for sort of some context. That all being said, um, in the lifetime that we have our cars, which is 50,000 hours, how you can Google for how much is the typical hours that we run our vehicles, running, you know, out of that many hours that we're running our vehicles, idling it for two, three hours, an extra, extra in a night, or even overnight if you needed to, no harm. Um, so as a general rule, like, you know, would you want to idle it for four or five days straight or two weeks straight? I mean, if you have to, to keep your house warm, maybe. But generally speaking, if you look at how it's actually used, running in a couple hours, no big deal. And in fact, when we came down here, we've got the two puppies you saw. Like, I just left our car running. I, I just, you know, I went in for lunch, 
I left our car running, I locked the doors, and the way you lock your doors is with a skeleton key. Does everyone know about that? I'm just going to point that out. So most uh, key fobs, hang on a second, hang on a second here, sorry, hang on a second, there it is. So most key fobs, you'll find a little tab that you can, a little slider switch you can do and you can pull, this is called a skeleton key. So if you go away, you went on a camping trip or you went somewhere and you left your battery completely died, your wireless remote, this is a way that you can lock and unlock your car. So the way you lock your car is you just press the lock button and then you shut your driver's side door and then you can turn this and it'll lock your vehicle. So, and if you're really worried about it, some people have asked about that too, for about $20 at Walmart, you can get a foot pedal lock. Well, we never really had to do this, but you can get a foot pedal lock that basically hooks around the steering wheel and around your brake pedal, and no one's gonna go anywhere with that in place. But basically, that's how you can lock your car. So back to the idling question, like I've idled my car for hundreds of hours. Um, many times I'll idle it like that to leave the dogs in it or anything. So in the overall scope of it, um, there's no harm. So. Uh, question and go back here to the guy in blue. Great question, diesel. So there's a lot of discussion about diesels as well, the new diesels, the old diesels, death fluid, uh, cylinder washing, there's all kinds of, you can find opinions. I, I, I will say there's as many opinions on that as there, on, or as there is on tow vehicles and whether you should tow with an SUV or whether you need a truck or whether you should leave your propane fridge on or if you shut it off while you're traveling and put ice cubes in your fridge. There's a lot of discussion on it. I'll just sort of zoom back just using pure simple logic that if you're running it an extra two or three hours, you know, in an evening after you've pulled for an, a day, it's really not an issue. Uh, you know, if you're going to run it for a week or for two weeks, that's not the point of this product. This product is to be really easy, really simple, no hassles of gas cans or storing or fumes starting problems, it's, it's, not, it's not, if you're going to need a generator to run for a long time, and actually, the bigger challenge with, um, with generators is actually, number one problem is FTS, which is fail to start, so people have this generator in the shed, they're going to use it, power outage happens, it doesn't start, so that's the pros and cons of that, this it always starts, so, uh, questions, Mike? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a really, really, really good point that I forgot. Like I often say that as a professional in my previous life, I sat in my car and idled or worked on my laptop, I'll sleep if I have to have a nap, whatever. Um, and idling your car is no big deal. Mike just mentioned that his daughter works in the funeral business and um, they start those cars, those limos and all the fleet vehicles, they start them in the morning and they just run and run and run and no harm. So there's a lot of discussion and people will split hairs about it, but in the overall context of it, you look at police cars, taxis, funeral cars, sales professionals. It's these cars, these engines are built with so much um, uh, sophistication. So, question. Yep. Yes. Yes. So, if you if you want to do only one thing just purely recharge your trailer battery as fast as possible. Some people even buy both. I actually have both. Um, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> but this one I use when I just want to charge my trailer battery super fast. Because look at that. It's putting 60, 70 amps in as fast and safely as possible. No harm to your trailer batteries whatsoever no harm to your vehicle alternator. It's all using the built-in voltage regulation, so there's no risk, no harm at all. This basically charges your trailer battery quick, fast, battery done. Run it for a couple hours, 
you're fully charged. This one, on the other hand, you can not only charge your trailer, it'll charge your trailer batteries, as you saw on the thing, about 22 to 25 amps. But you can also watch TV, you cook, and you can use an Instant Pot and run your laptop. And so some people actually buy both. So don't. But anyways, I want to say thank you very much. It's 4 o'clock, and thanks for attending. Thanks for Oh